Welcome to Algebra 1, Unit 6, Lesson 6-2, Slope-Intercept Form, Part 2. Our objective today is I will be able to graph equations in slope-intercept form. I'm Mr. Polarski. I work out of Pearson, Algebra 1, Copyright 2009. Definition. I know I talked, this about, I talked about this in Lesson 6-2, Part 1, but... It's always good to start this lesson with a bit of a review. Y is equal to mx plus b. M is the slope. Remember that? Less than six ones. We talked about the slope. B is the y-intercept in lesson six two, part one. We introduced the idea of the y-intercept. And if you haven't watched the video I made, it's a good discussion of slopes with an online graphing tool. Pretty good discussion of the y-intercept and the slope. Uh, with a online graphing tool to help you understand what's going on visually. Here, example 4t, graphing equations in slope-intercept form. Coming back to that slope-intercept form, y is equal to mx plus b. The equation is y is equal to one-third x minus 2. As we saw previously, in part one of lesson six two this equation y is equal to one third x minus two can be rewritten as y is equal to one third x plus a negative two so we have it in that exact slope intercept form the b in this case would be a negative two then labeling your x and your y axis is always a good idea So I plot the y-intercept of negative 2. And some teachers might require you to write this down. It's a good idea for you to do that. By writing this down, you show your teacher that you understand that this is the slope of the equation. This might even be considered your work. And we use the slope, m, which in this case is a positive one-third, to graph at least one additional point, the slope being the rise over the run or the change in y over the change in x, or the vertical change over the horizontal change. Since the vertical change, in this case, 1, is positive, we go up 1, and then we would go to the right 3, 1, 2, 3. We've, at this point, if you're my student, you've seen me graph multiple lines using this method. Since we can't go up one into the right three, since our grid doesn't allow that, or our coordinate plane doesn't allow that, we can do the opposite, the exact opposite. Instead of going up one into the right three, we can go down one into the left three and graph another point. So to graph additional points, if you run out of room because your coordinate plane's not large enough, you can always do the exact opposite. At this point, you need to add a line And that's a pretty easy thing to do. You can use a straight edge. A straight edge could be anything. A, a note card folded in half. A piece of paper folded a couple times could make a good straight edge. And you just draw a line through it. So there's graphing a linear equation. Here's another example. One thing to note about this example, let's go back for a second. It's a positive slope. So notice the line. It goes from left to right. It goes upwards just like a positive correlation does in a scatter plot. Example 4t, doing the same thing, understanding in this case that the slope is m, and in the form y is equal to mx plus b, which is slope-intercept form. The m, in this case, is negative 5 halves. And the y-intercept is 3. Again, labeling our x and our y axis. I'll graph the y intercept, which is actually the point 0, 3, so up 3. And in this case, since we have a negative slope, uh, we'll go down 5 into the right 2. So down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into the right 2, 1, 2. In this case, I don't have enough room on my coordinate plane 
to graph any more than two points. So these are the only two actual good points that will be on the line. And so then we need to draw a line for those. And that would look something like that. Oh, that's not a very good looking line, but it'll do for now. And that's how you would graph that using the slope and the y-intercept. First graphing the y-intercept and then using the slope to graph at least one additional point. The more points you can graph, the more understanding you can show by graphing more points. Example 5T, real world problem solving. The base pay for a used car salesperson is $300 per week. The person also earns a 15% commission on sales made. The equation T is equal to 300 plus 0.15S relates total earnings T to sales S. Graph the equation. You can see I already have started to set up my graph. I'm going to do no more setting up the graph until I go through understanding the slope and getting my slope so I can actually scale my x and my y axis or my this case the s and the t axis so the first thing I do when I read a problem like this is I'll pull out the equation in this case t is equal to 300 plus 0.15 s now, I just displayed a bad habit that a lot of people do. Uh, I'm a math teacher and I do it. I said this number is 0 0.15 or some people say it is 0 0.15. The correct way to say this would be 15 hundredths. 15 hundredths because this ends in the hundredths place. But that will come into play later in the problem. What we need to understand first is that T is our dependent variable. So at this point... I'm identifying t as our dependent variable because typically if an equation is already solved for a variable, that's the dependent variable. And remember, that gets graphed on the vertical axis. So we're going to be graphing t on the vertical axis. So I can label that axis now t. And on the horizontal axis, I'm going to graph s or our independent variable. These are words that I've been using all year long with my classes the independent and the dependent variable. This is going to be the dependent variable because it's by itself in the equation. This is going to be the dependent variable, S is, because it's on the right side with the numerical expression. So you don't have to. I like to rewrite the equation as T is equal to in more of a slope-intercept form. Even though we're using T and S instead of X and Y, we can still write this in slope-intercept form, where this is our slope-intercept. So I know this t-axis, we're going to cross at 300. So I'm going to skip the numbers from 0 to 300 by first using a little line here, a little zigzag, to indicate that I'm cutting my axis. And my first point is going to be 300. So I'll cut through that first line there, and my first point or my first tick mark and my first mark on my graph is going to be 300. Because I know that's going to be my t-intercept or the vertical intercept or the y-intercept. It doesn't matter what the variable is. But when s is equal to 0, I know t is going to be 300. So that will be my first point that I'll plot is that intercept. Let's take a look at the slope. This would be the slope, the coefficient on the s. Now, as I said earlier, the bad habit we get into is saying this is 0 0.15, when in reality, you should know this as 15 hundredths, or the fraction 15 over 100. Since this represents the change and the, the vertical change over the horizontal change, I know I should number my vertical axis by 15. Remember, this is the vertical change or the change in the total earnings. 
Okay, this is the change in T, or delta T, the change in T. So I know I want to start at 300. I'm going to want to count by something like 10s or 20s or something close to 15. Uh, in my notes, when I worked this out before I made the video, I counted each line as 10. So 300, this would be 310. Then I marked the next line, and that would be 320. This would be 330. This is 340. This is 350, so this would be 360. And I know this is something my students struggle with, is making a graph and setting it up. So here I decided to start my graph at 300 because the y-intercept is 300. And I decided to count by something close to 15 because that's the change in the t-axis or the total earnings axis. I decided to count by 10, so 360, which would be 370, and finally 380 on this graph. Along the s-axis, or the sales, yeah, this is the sales axis. Now, I can't really write vertically, but this is the total income. the total income axis. That's why we labeled it T. I'm going to number the sales axis. I'm going to decide that by looking at the denominator here. It's 100. That's the change in the S. I'm going to write T. Say S and write T. It's S. The change in the S is 100. So this first one's going to be 0, obviously. This will be 50. I'm going to mark 100, this would be 150, this would be 200, and I'll just continue that pattern, 250, 300, 350, 400. And so then I can use my slope, because I know the intercept here is 300, this is the intercept, so I can graph a point there. And then from there, the slope tells me to go up 15, up 15 units, and to the right 100. Now, with the way I got my axes labeled, it should make it pretty easy. Starting here, I need to go up 15. Well, this is 10, so halfway between, this is 310, I need 315, so that'd be halfway here, halfway between 310 and 320, and then I go to the right 100. That makes it pretty easy. From here, I need to go up 15 into the right 100. So this would be from here, this point here to here would be 5, and another 10 would be here, and then to the right 100. And we could do one more. Up 15 to the right 100. Even though I'm only moving up a space and a half, it's because I scaled it down. And we could go up 15 into the right 100. And then we're running out of room. And at that point, you can try to Draw a line in with your straight edge. I'll use one from my tools. And I think that line will be good because it's going to start there. It's never going to be lower than 300. And then draw a line through those. And there is graphing this person's total income depending on their sales because they earn a commission. We had to break the slope down into a fraction that we could use to graph these points. This has been Mr. Polarski with the slope-intercept form of an equation. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.